How can we, in such a short time, share with you what it means to be a refugee? The standard definition of a refugee is when you have to flee your country because of fear and persecution. But refugee means much more than the definition coined by the books. It means to run, run and leave everything you have, your family, friends, your country, because of war and because you don't have another choice. But what does it feel like to be a refugee? Imagine your life and future destroyed by bombs, the sounds of sirens, gunshots, seeing people running, dying. You are left with only a few things, your memories, hope for protection, and a wish for a new life somewhere safe. But not every refugee's wish comes true. The fact is that less than 1% of the worldwide 20 million refugees get resettled to a new country. Many current media and political discussions portray refugees mostly in negative light, while leaving out the struggles and successes of the refugees. But to add to the story, we will walk you through a journey of a refugee using our stories and stages of resettlement. On January 7, 1993, my mother and I escaped the horrors of war in Bosnia. At the age of eight, I left everything behind, my friends, family, and the dreams of a child. I remember a snowy night, and I remember my father saying, you need to leave, but do not worry about me. I have to stay. I remember my mother's teary eyes. That was the first time I experienced what it felt like to be a refugee. I had a nice life in Bosnia. I was going to high school, enjoying peace and freedom. But I remember the day in 1992, I was sitting in my classroom and suddenly bombs. Nothing was the same anymore. Soon after, I was forced into war together with the rest of my classmates. War took everything I had, even life of my father. Two years after, I was badly wounded, and together with 40,000 other refugees, I was forced to flee my country. This was the first time I was leaving my home. I didn't have a, another choice. I remember the morning my father hired a man to take my mother and I across the border. As I sat in the car, I was told we were leaving for Germany. Through a fogged up window, I watched as the figure of my father grew smaller. With tears in my eyes, I waved until I could no longer see my father. Nothing made sense. After fleeing Bosnia, I ended up in refugee camp in Croatia, together with 40,000 other refugees. We were stopped in the middle of the highway by the Croatian military. I was badly wounded just a week before I escaped. The shrapnel I'm holding in my hand entered my artery by the heart and traveled down to my leg and stayed there for 15 years. The situation in the camp was horrible. We didn't have a medical help food, water, or place to sleep. In order to survive, I decided to leave the camp and walk to Austria. I remember my mother saying, go, save your life, do not worry about us. The journey to Austria was very difficult because I had to cross the Croatian minefields, cold rivers and forests. But finally, I was able to escape the brutality of Bosnian war. My first experience as a refugee was in Germany, and my second experience as a refugee was in the United States. In Germany, we were granted temporary stay, and we could not return to Bosnia because it was too dangerous to return. So we applied to come to the United States, and it took us over two years to be resettled. I was 16 years old when we came to Boise. And the first few years were very difficult for me and my family. 
because we didn't speak the uh, English language or understood the American culture. Just a month after resettlement, my parents had to find their first job. And soon after, they found a second job to make ends meet. I followed working a job while attending high school. After staying in Austria for three years, my temporary refugee status expired, and I was told that I have to leave. But where should I go now? I went to American embassy in Croatia, and I applied to be resettled. Two years after, I was resettled to Boise. First days in Boise were difficult because I didn't speak the language. I remember time going to Walgreens and having a hard time saying that I needed toothpaste. But four weeks after, I was uh, happy when I got my first job. I remember my case manager saying, make sure you keep your job. I have always dreamt of going to college and the United States provided me with the opportunity to pursue an education. With the help of my teacher, Mr. B, I was able to successfully finish high school and enroll at a local university. And today, I'm at the end of my doctoral studies. I have not only been given the opportunity to pursue an education, I have been given a gift, a gift to be able to advocate for the refugee populations and other marginalized populations in our community. Since I came to Boise 16 years ago, I was working very hard to establish a new life in my new country. I was working for microengineering department, and I was encouraged to go to college and pursue education, education that was destroyed by bombs back in Bosnia. Today, as a doctoral student, I'm happy that I can use my education and my experiences to help my community prosper. As you can see from our stories, a refugee just wants to have a life, a life without fear, a life without war. But the refugee story does not end with resettlement. We integrate, we become American citizens, we grow, we make friends and family. It is our hope that with our stories, we help change the frame how our society sees refugees who are fleeing to save their lives. It is time that our nation begins to see refugees not as liabilities, but as assets, and not as burdens, but as becoming. Isn't that what our country is all about? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.